All right, so today we're gonna make some granulated powder out of the uh, black powder that we made last video. So we've got our 300 grams of black powder that we made with our mimosa charcoal. Uh, we're gonna be having to use some gloves today, a little bit of alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, and then it's a, messy. The yep, alcohol. yeah, it kind of squirted out there. We've got a couple different size screens to make some different grades or granulations, and then just a little uh, gram scale. Let's get started. All right, so the two sizes that I'm going to be making today are for the lift powder, which is going to be a larger sized grain and then a smaller size which would be for kind of like for muzzle loaders and stuff um, i'm not going to really be using a lot of this so i'm not going to make as much of this today i'm just going to make some just for demonstration so for our lift charge we're going to use a, a number four screen and that's going to make what's known as a 2fa which is a blasting grade um, of black powder so this is a number four mesh because there are four squares per inch in this mesh. That's the mesh size. It's a size four. This one's a size 12. There's 12 squares per inch of mesh size. Um, once they're dried out, you can see the difference in the size. And then you can also see the difference in um, the actual ignition when you, when you light it on fire. All right, so we're going to be mixing some isopropyl alcohol in here and this is a this is 70 percent isopropyl alcohol 25 percent per weight to our 300 grams of black powder so 25 percent of 300 is 75 so we're going to be adding 75 grams of the isopropyl alcohol to the black powder and we'll kind of add it a little bit at a time um, just so it mixes up well I and mean, then we're trying to get a consistency kind of like a, a Play-Doh or just like a, a clay ball almost. You don't really want it too too wet um, and you don't want it to be crumbly and dry. You want it to kind of stick together, but you don't want it to be oversaturated and like, kind of like running all over the place. Alright, so there's 75 grams of the isopropyl alcohol, and we're not going to add all of it at the same time. We're going to add a little bit, mix it up, and then see where we're at, and then we'll mix a little bit more. So, awesome. put your gloves on, because we're going to be mixing this sort of by hand. Uh, it's better to have gloves on when you're working with this stuff. Make sure you get gloves that fit. Mine kind of doesn't fit. Yours doesn't fit? Is it too big? Yeah. Mine are too small. Alright, so here we go. We're going to, again, we're doing this in a well-ventilated area. I'm not going to have gloves. going to add, going to add most of it, but not quite all of it, just to Tiny bit. make sure where we're at. Mushy. All right, so we'll go ahead and add the rest in there. It needs a little bit more. And at the beginning, this stuff is pretty dusty, so just make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Once it all gets coated and kind of becomes moistened, um, it's not really as dusty. You can kind of be, uh, you can get a little bit closer to it. All right, so we're actually going to use a bigger bowl. I probably should have started with a bigger bowl, but uh, or a bigger container. Um, we're just going to kind of put it in this bigger bowl to help mix it up. That looks like See, it's kind of getting crumbly. It's, some of it's starting to stick together, but it's still really kind of crumbly. So just add a very little bit. I don't want to work it into just like a little dough ball. Just kind of consistency like this. That's pretty good right there. 
get these little crumblies that kind of fall off, the pieces that sort of dry out a little bit faster, but try to get as much as you can. About I that consistency, see like that. Canal. Just about like that. All right, so for this, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna separate this into about four equal parts. Uh, so we'll just kind of break it in half. You can see it kind of like breaks in half like that. And then just break it in half one more time. So then we have a nice little ball, ball about that size. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to flatten this into a little patty and then we're going to squish it between a couple of, of clipboards we got uh, to flatten it out to about a sixteenth of, a of an inch. Uh, basically like big patty and then we're gonna push it through this screen to get the size grains that we want so first what we're gonna do is get some plastic wrap put down kind of make a little no. nice little patty out of this real quick like this patty 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 You want to get that kind of like a two and a half or something. Put a little spacers in there. And then just uh, kind of smush it down. Get it kind of as close as you can to that size because when you push it through these the mesh it's going to kind of act like an extruder and kind of squish it through and, and kind of make it longer so you want it to be a little bit uh, thinner so when you push it through it comes out at the right size cool. all right so then what we're going to do is take this top piece of plastic wrap off Take our screen, put it right on top of there, and then we'll just flip the whole thing just like that. And then now that patty is on top of there, and then we'll put a little plate underneath it, right directly underneath that patty to catch the grains as they fall through. So we're basically just pushing them straight through the screen. You can use some type of a brush. I'm just going to use an old toothbrush and kind of just make sure you get all that stuff up there. You are going to have some that's not quite the size uh, that you want. It'll be either too small or it'll almost be like a like a dust size, but that's okay. We can use that. Most of it's going to be 
the size of this mesh, which is what we want. And uh, you can kind of see that they're all little granules. And as they dry, they'll be able to kind of separate out. Um, we just let that kind of sit in the sun or put it in a, some people make drying boxes and they'll put it in a drying box. Um, just let it dry out. All right, so this one's gonna be a little bit different. Um, so we're actually not gonna push it through. Uh, we're actually gonna kind of like, just, we're gonna push the ball in and kind of twist and twist and twist and twist. And it's just a little bit different of a, we don't a little want bit different. Did it make one? Yeah. Actually, we're gonna do this one the same because this is the size uh, brains we want. But you can take the ball and just push it through and like twist it. But we're going to do the same process to get uh, try to get this size. Done. And if you find that these uh, other parts kind of are getting dried out a little bit, you can always add some more alcohol. Um, but like this really fine kind of dusty stuff, you can actually use that as like a meal powder. Meal D is what they call it. Um, and then even all this stuff that's kind of all, all in the sides here, you can still use that stuff. Or you can... Try to consolidate it, add some more alcohol to it uh, to get it back to the consistency you want. So this one's a little bit different because this size is, is really meant for um, the other pellets, but we're gonna just try it on this one and see. Hopefully it kind of works out pretty good. Actually, we're just gonna squish this one without these. We're just gonna try to squish it as, as thin as we can get it. This size screen, this is a 12 mesh, so this will probably make more of like a uh, a 1FG, which is more of a, it's not quite as fine. It's not really the grade you would want to use in a muzzleloader. Usually you do like a, a 2F or a 3F, um, but just for demonstration purposes, we'll make some of this size. But you would need a 16 screen for that. And this one we can kind of just like push through there a little bit more than the other one because it's thinner. We're actually trying to get it thinner, yeah. Smaller grain size. You just basically kind of like mash it in and twist it, mash it, twist it, mash it. Alright, that's pretty much it. We're just gonna let it dry and Alright, so when it first comes out uh, and it's still pretty wet, you don't really want to mess with it too much because it will kind of go back into a powder. Uh, but once it dries a little bit, you can kind of come in here you know, with like a knife or something and you kind of break some of these up. This is still kind of too wet to really be doing this with, but um, it'll kind of stick to itself a little bit. But once it dries, you can kind of come in shake it a little bit kind of get those little pieces to break up um, and then as it dries more and more you can kind of come in and, and start breaking these little pieces up uh, to get the more unified size uh, and then on this one you can actually see some little pieces like in here might be kind of hard to see, but you see how it's kind of like a really long piece. Um, like that one there is like really long. And that's kind of what I was talking about where it kind of like pushes it through that mesh. 
and makes like really long pieces. We still got some pretty good uh, unified or uniform grain sizes for the smaller mesh, but um, that's why you want to try to get it to a certain thickness before you push it through because it's going to uh, sort of make it these long, almost like spaghetti like pieces coming out. Uh, but most of it turned out pretty good. You see the difference in that sizing as opposed to, you know, this size over here. So this would be kind of like a 1FG, and this would be some kind of like a 2FA. Probably take a day or two to dry out. That's the end of this video. See ya.